Okay, welcome to today's video everyone. So today we're going to be seeing a harder extension 1 type question. So the question says, explain why 1 over n plus 1 is less than the integral from n to n plus 1 of 1 over x dx, which is less than 1 over n. Hence, deduce that 1 plus 1 over n or to the power n is less than e, which is less than 1 plus 1 over n or to the power n plus 1. So the first thing that you should notice when you do this question is the first part asks you to find bounds for this integral here. So when you're trying to find bounds for an integral, one way that one thing that you should consider is the area that the integral actually represents. And so I've drawn a little diagram here. So this integral 1 over x, the integral of 1 over x between these two, so this is a hyperbola, and this represents the area under the curve between these two points. So it represents this area here. Now, we want to find lower and upper bounds. So if we consider these two rectangles, which are actually known as Riemann sums, by the way, but that's part of uni work, so you don't need to worry about that for the moment. But if we consider these two rectangles here, we're estimating this value of the area. But one of the rectangles underestimates and the other one overestimates and so from that we can get two different bounds an upper bound and a lower bound so if we consider this area here let's call that a1 so a1 is our lower bound and let's consider this area here we can call that a2 That'll be our upper bound. Okay, so what we're actually doing, we know that this A2 overestimates and A1 underestimates. And so we can say that A1 is less than the area under the curve, which is given by this integral. So we have this integral here, 1 over x dx. But this is less than the overestimating area. So this is less than A2. Okay, so how do we work out what area A1 is? Well, A1 is just the area of a rectangle. So the rectangle has area base times height. So the base here is the difference between these two x values. So n plus 1 minus n times... Now you can see that the height of this rectangle is the x value, sorry, the y value at this x coordinate. And since the curve is y equals 1 over x, the uh, height of this rectangle is going to be 1 over n plus 1. Okay, now we need to work out the area of the overestimated rectangle. So we have a look at this overestimated rectangle. The base is, again, n plus 1 minus n times, now what's the height of this one? The height is the y-coordinate at x equals n, which is 1 over n. And so, from here, we can get n plus 1 minus n is just 1, and so we have 1 over n plus 1. That's less than this integral here. which is less than n plus 1 minus n is 1, so we get 1 over n. And so here we've shown what we need to show in the first part. Okay, so the second bit says, hence deduce this bound for E, these two bounds for E. So now that we see that we need to get bounds for E, we should recognize here that the integral of 1 over x is the natural log. And since the natural log is in base E, we sort of think to ourselves, well, maybe we need to... Uh, find the integral, find the value of this integral. So if we go ahead and compute the value of this integral, we get the log of x. Now since n and n plus 1 are positive, we don't need to put absolute value signs. So we get this evaluated between n and n plus 1. Okay, and so this becomes log of n minus, sorry, log of n plus 1 minus log of n, and we can use our log laws and combine the two into one log. So we get m plus 1 over n. 1 over n. 
Okay, now, if you look back to the question, we see that we have 1 plus 1 over n, and we need to involve that somehow. So if you look here, n plus 1 over n, that's actually equal to 1 plus 1 over n. So we have the log of 1 plus 1 over n. Okay, so now we can exponentiate both sides. So we get e to the power 1 over n plus 1 is less than the, the exponential of log 1 plus 1 over n, which is less than the exponential of 1 over n. Okay, now exponential and log are inverse functions, and so they'll cancel each other out. And we're left with 1 plus 1 over n is less than e to the 1 over n. Okay. So, now we recognize back in the question that we want to have e by itself. So we're finding bounds for e. But here we have e as part of the two bounds of something. So let's consider these, uh, this inequality as two separate inequalities. So we take this inequality here, and we have a look at this inequality here. So, now that we have these, we can raise, on with this inequality, raise both sides to the power n plus 1, because we're trying to get e by itself. So we have e is less than 1 plus 1 over n to the n plus 1. And so this here is an upper bound for e, which is what we want. And here we can do a similar thing and raise both sides to the power n. And so we get 1 plus 1 over n to the power n is less than e. So here we've got a lower bound for e. And so we can combine these two inequalities and we have the lower bound of e and we have our upper bound for e. And that's, oh, that should be just an n, n plus 1. And so that is the result that we were trying to prove. So once again, once you see we're trying to find bounds for an integral, the best thing to do is to consider areas, uh, consider the actual area and try and find overestimates and underestimates of this integral. Okay, hope you enjoyed the video.